In this video, we like to consider some special matrices and their determinants. So first, let's look at matrices that are called lower triangular. If you notice, a matrix is lower triangular if it has entries along the diagonal and below the diagonal. So where you see stars in this matrix, they represent non-zero entries. And then there would be zero entries above the diagonal. So lower triangular means that there's a triangle that's made below the diagonal. A diagonal matrix is a matrix that has entries just along the diagonal entry. So these would be all of the entries that look like AII, so for example A11, A12, and so on and so forth. And then there would be zeros in all entries everywhere else in the matrix. So the only non-zero entries in a diagonal matrix are found along the diagonal. Finally, an upper triangular matrix is just the opposite of a lower triangular matrix. It has non-zero entries possibly on the diagonal, and then entries above the diagonal which are non-zero, and all of the entries below the diagonal will be zero. So again, the stars here above the diagonal represent possible non-zero entries. It should be noted that a diagonal matrix is both lower and upper triangular. And you can answer that question for yourself as to why that's the case. <clears throat> okay, so if L and U and D are lower triangular, upper triangular, and diagonal matrices, then the determinant of L, the determinant of U, and the determinant of D is the product of the diagonal entries. So it's very interesting because lower triangular and upper triangular and diagonal matrices, um, their determinants are easily found because the determinants of those matrices are all simply the product of their diagonal entries. So let's look at this example. We have a lower triangular matrix that has minus 1, minus 3, 6 on the diagonal, 2, 4, and 5 below, and notice that they're all zeros above. And so the determinant of this matrix is simply the product of those diagonal entries, which is minus 1 times minus 3 times 6, which is 18. And this process is exactly the same for upper triangular and diagonal matrices. So it's simply, again, the product of the diagonal entries. So how can we exploit the determinants of lower and upper triangular matrices, um, you know, and use that with our elementary row operations that we saw in the previous video? Because this might lead us to a process for finding the determinant of matrices of any size, any n by n matrix, just by combining the two things that we know now. That is, namely, that lower, upper, and diagonal matrices have determinants which are the product of their diagonal entries. And then by doing either row swaps or combining rows or multiplying by scalars, they have very straightforward, uh, they make very straightforward changes to those determinants. And so we can put those things together and find determinants of much more um, complicated type problems. So consider we have a matrix A, and we got to this matrix B through elementary row operations. Um, so as you can see, we have it's an upper triangular matrix. Clearly, the matrix B's determinant would be the product of its diagonal entries. But the only thing is that we're looking here for the determinant of A, and we got from A to B by doing some elementary row operations. So let me kind of detail what those row operations were as an example. So let's uh, suppose that we did five row swaps. We multiplied row three by two, and that became the new row three. And then row 4 was 5 times row 2 plus row 4. So let's just remember a few things. Row swaps, every time we do a row swap alone by itself, that multiplies the determinant by minus 1. Every time we multiply a row by a scalar, and that's the only thing that we do, that changes the determinant of the matrix by that scalar. And then, of course, if we multiply one row by something and add to another row, it has absolutely no effect on the determinant. So here we are, we're looking at this matrix B, and we want to be able to tell from the matrix B and the information we were given about it, the elementary row operations that got us there, we want to be able to determine the determinant of the matrix A. So let's begin. The five row swaps, if you recall, change the determinant by a negative 1, and since there were 5 of them, that's an odd number. So whatever the determinant of B is, the determinant of A is the negative of that. Looking at the second operation we did, we multiplied row 3 by 2. That means that the determinant of B is going to be twice as much as the determinant of A. So whatever we get for the determinant of B, we have to multiply that by 1 half. 
And then finally, multiplying row 2 by 5 and adding that to row 4 has no effect at all on the determinant. So that won't change between A or B. So now that we put these two things together, it looks like what we need to do is find the determinant of B. That needs to be multiplied by minus 1 because of row swaps and minus a half to undo the fact that we multiplied row 3 by 2. And so the determinant of A would be minus 1 to the fifth power times 1 half times the product of the diagonal entries, which is minus 1 times minus 5 times 8 times 10. And that should equal to minus 200. So the determinant of the matrix A is minus 200. So what we see from this example is that if we have a n by n matrix A, if we just row reduce it to its upper triangular form, and we keep track of how many row swaps we have, and how many times, and what the, the constants were that we multiplied any row by doing that only by itself, then we can easily calculate the determinant of the original matrix A. And just so that you see there, that is the determinant of B, correct? All right, so a few interesting properties of determinants are, you might want to make a note of these, the determinant of A transpose is exactly the determinant of A. The determinant of the product A and B is equal to the determinant of A times the determinant of B. And if A is a singular matrix, then the determinant of A is equal to zero. And just recall that singular means that A does not have an inverse. So any matrix that has determinant A equal to zero, we know that that matrix is singular. And of course, the corollary of that is that any matrix that has determinant of A not equal to zero, then that matrix is non-singular.